Hi, I'm Jen from House One, and today I'm showing how to build the ultimate mobile workbench. This is part one of my mobile workbench series, where I show how to create this workbench, and then add customizations, like easy tool storage, DIY drawers, dust collection, a downdraft sanding table, and a clamp rack. Aside from being a large work surface, I'm also building this workbench to house my table saw, which I recently upgraded. To get started, I first coated the full sheets with two coats of primer, and then used a circular saw to break down the large pieces. I tipped the base upright and used glue and corner clamps to hold the walls in place. I screwed through the base and into the bottom edge of the pieces to secure them, and then added the center wall and the size of the opening that would hold the table saw. Lastly, I attached the shallow walls that would create a recess at the opposite end for a clamp rack. I then set the assembly on dollies so I could move it around as I added more dividers and a shelf inside one of the cabinet openings. It was finally time to add the final caster wheels and tip the assembly upright. Next, I installed temporary blocks to hold the shelf for the table saw with a plan to fine tune the shelf height after the top is installed. I used a circular saw to cut an opening in the tabletop for the table saw, and then trimmed the corners with a hand saw. I also trimmed the wall of the frame to allow the table saw's extension to fully open. I used a hole saw to create an opening in the wall behind my table saw, so that I can set my vacuum in the adjacent cabinet and still connect it to my table saw's dust collection port. Finally, I was at least set up enough to use the table saw so that I could size the doors and shelves. After using the table saw, I discovered that I needed to add another vertical divider to support the workbench surface beside the saw. Next, I added some doubled up plywood pieces as supports on the open side of the assembly. I finished this off with 1x2s, which could have also been plywood strips, placed across the cabinet opening to strengthen the plywood top and to create a stop for my full inset doors. Once installed, I drilled pocket holes along the top edges of the walls and supports, and then positioned the worktop and screwed it into place. To install the doors, I drilled a hole for European hinges using a jig, and then screwed the hinges to the doors. Next, I positioned the doors and screwed the hinges to the inside of the frame. I used a hardware jig spaced to the width of my door handles to drill perfectly spaced holes, and then secured the handles on each door. To see the other customizations that I made to this workbench, including the power tool storage, easy DIY drawers, dust collection, downdraft sanding station, and clamp rack, visit the House One channel on thisoldhouse.com. I'm Jen Largis, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. This Old House has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.